So um, the role of the pastor this, or the senior pastor is uh, quite important in the, you know, in the uh, when we consider worship ministry. So the worship, pa I mean, the senior pastor, the pastor of the church, he's the one who sets the vision. You know, sometimes we think, okay, the person who is, you know, who's interested with this worship ministry, maybe he sets, he or she should shed, set the, you know, vision for worship ministry. No, it actually comes from, in fact, every department right, of the church, the vision is set by, you know, uh, the the pastor, the founding pastor or the pastoral team, right? Uh, sometimes there is a, there is a, uh, a, a group of elders, depending on the church structure, right? Um, but the thing is, the, that vision for every department, whether it's a children's ministry, youth ministry, worship ministry, everything comes from there, you know, or it has to be set. Uh, so the direction, you know, what is important, what is not, uh, where we are going, everything has to come from there. Otherwise, we'll be going in different directions or pulling in different directions, which is not in line with the overall vision of the church, right? So, so we, we last class we looked at that how the senior pastor or the um, sets the direction, the momentum, the vision for the worship ministry, uh, and also in discussion with the uh, worship pastor, you know, there's always this collaboration, there's always this discussion and uh, transparency and everything which is there in that. Um, Kind of a, a relationship with them, right? So, um, so, um, so today we look at um, the role of the worship pastor. I think we kind of touched upon it last class. Um, let me just share that screen. The role of the worship pastor, right? Okay. Okay. So we see that it's uh, you know. Maybe we can look at seven aspects or seven facets of the role of the worship pastor. So we said, you know, um, the worship pastor is a priest, and uh, priests help to build connection, build bridges. Uh, and a, a priest, you know, typical role of a priest is to go before a congregation on behalf of God. So in other words, you know, uh, representing God's heart. God's thoughts, God's ways to a group of people, right? And also going to God on behalf of that group of people whom you represent. You know, that is a typical role of the priest, right? Now we know that all of us are kings and priests unto God, you know, as we see in First Peter uh, and also as we see in Revelation, the book of Revelation, we see that, you know, as New Testament people, as new creations, we are kings and priests unto God, royal priesthood, right? So, um, so then, so then, what is the role of the worship pastor as a priest, right? So worship pastor, um, it is not just a song leader, right? It's not just a person who who finds out what are these new songs, new trends, you know, though it might be one of it. But then, one a person who's a worship pastor needs to consider oneself as a priest and right? consecrated to God. Uh, wanting to enable or help people to draw near to God, and also to be able to, um, you know, go before God on behalf of the people. Right. So, so this is something that um, that one sh one who is a worship pastor should look at oneself. You know, this is the identity. I'm a priest. You know, um, so that is that is the first thing. The second one uh, is as a prophet, meaning. To lead the church into uh, areas of worship or depth of worship, which the church has not experienced before, you know, prophets do that. Prophets announce the move of God. Prophets point, um, you know, the one who's in the office of a prophet, you know, take, you know, release people into their destiny and call and and uh, uh, and also announce the moves of God and and so on, right? Point people, point the or you know, maybe it's a group of people or a, a congregation or even a nation to point towards what God wants to do and to point them, not just point them, but, you know, um, kind of push in that direction, right? So the word pastor is as uh, as a prophet, right? So um, to speak forth, to inspire, to sing out by inspiration, by leading of the Holy Spirit, right? So always seeking the heart of God, 
it could be for you know a long term vision of okay god you know this year where do you want us to go in terms of worship you know do you want us to move in in terms of you know um like breakthrough worship and um what is it that you want done right because every church like is in um uh how should we say you know it it's in a different phase right we know uh, if you've studied that um um you know about church administration and so on you see that uh, you know uh, a church goes through different phases and right from the founding you know the foundation laying stage to the growth stage to the apostolic stage and and all that you no know, different phases um and and as a sending out base right which is a place where people are sent out and so on so um so the thing is for the worship pastor to understand okay which stage or phase of life is the church in right it's very important to have that understanding and to get the heart of god in this season uh, that the church is in um now what else needs to be done you know how should we move forward in this season right so that's that's very very important so the worship pastor is also you know taking on the role as a as a prophetic person right then the worship pastor as a teacher that goes without saying so you know when it comes to worship we see that uh, you know worship as a ministry worship as uh, as something that all believers are to enter into uh, people ha- again have different understanding of it you know um, based on their unchurched background or even based on their churched you know which a church or denomination or movement they come from people may not have a biblical scriptural understanding of worship so so it is a responsibility of the worship pastor to to bring in that understanding right? to bring in that scriptural uh understanding of what worship is right as a teacher so um in ways by precept which means by looking into the word of god the what is the principle what is the precept what is the teaching there but also by example right so how can we you know now that we've learned the precept now that we've seen what is the principle you know how, how do we step into it maybe if it's a spontaneous worship maybe people are used to maybe liturgical worship right now um you want to move into a, a time where people can freely express their heart to god and not just restrict themselves to you know prayers that are there in the you know which are written down right uh, nothing wrong in having liturgy um but to be enable to to enable the church to you know spontaneous spontaneously out of the fullness of their heart to to express their praise and worship to god so well you teach that and and say okay this is what the freedom that we see in the psalms that there is people that pe people there are shouting out and exclaiming and and lifting their voices and and praising god so can we do that as a congregation you know how can we step into it so creating that time and and also instructing the teams and the worship leaders to um to facilitate this you know in the, because not it it may it won't come automatically there has to be a intentional stepping into that uh, it might be a little awkward um you know at at in the beginning but then you do that right so a worship pastor as a teacher the worship pastor are also as a as the name suggests as a pastor the one who's a shepherd the one who cares for the team the one who cares for the people whom the team is ministering to right so recognizing leadership understanding the you know the the divine order that is there and uh, um, and also lead right so that's a, another thing to lead to serve to minister to lead so uh maybe when you look at the team there is another aspect of leading when you look at the congregation there is another aspect of leading in ministry so the worship pastor does the pastoral role or the shepherding role right um as as a pastor right? the worship pastor is also an intercessor which means praying again for the team praying for 
you know the, the worship the life of worship of the church uh, and also praying against you know preemptively praying against the attack of the enemy the confusion of the enemy and so as the role of an intercessor right um, the worship pastor also as a mentor right uh, when we see that there's al al always uh, new people who come in and who need to be mentored, uh, who will take time to fit in, who will take time to you know, settle in. Um, so they need to be mentored. Maybe there are others in the congregation who need to be mentored. So um, the worship pastor also finds oneself in the role of a mentor. You know, the mentoring progress, if you know, if you want to see, it's like first of all, you know. The, the person himself or herself, the worship pastor, has to first do it, right? You cannot just instruct others to do it, but you do it in the in the process of mentoring. You do it. And the second thing is, you know, invite the person whom you're mentoring to to observe. And say, you know, you observe. You don't have to do it, but you observe how I do it. Right. And then there is also the teaching of how you can do it. Okay. Now after the teaching, um, most times, you know, this is a safe way, you know, safe way in the sense uh, um, it sets oneself or uh, it sets the person whom you are actually building up. Uh, it sets them for success. It sets, uh, sets them up for, uh, uh, or, uh, for a triumph, you know, to do it well. Right? So if you look at it, you know, there's an observation and then there is also teaching. And when we actually want the person to actually do it, so we invite the person and say, okay, you lead in worship or you do it along with me, right? So we'll share the load. You do it with me, which means that I'm going to take the lead, but you can participate in it. Maybe there are some non-critical areas or areas that you're comfortable with, you do it, right? Um, so this is something that um, we can open up for the other person, give an opportunity. And then I do it with you, which means that you know I'm going to take a, a, a kind of a second or a, a backseat kind of a role, but then you are the one who's going to lead. right? So you do it, but I'm going to do it with you. Okay? Then you are on your own. right? And within all these stages are also feedback. You know, we give feedback. You reflect. You review uh, how things went. Uh, you know what should not have been said. Uh, what should not have been sung. What should not have been. You know uh, uh, the way in which maybe the tone. What whatever. You know there is a feedback the review, which means you think about it, reflect on what went, how it went, and there is feedback, which means you share. Okay. On both sides, you know, what did we learn? What did we, you know, uh, what needs to be unlearned, etc. So now the person is able to do on their own. Right? Um, and then they come to a place of, you know, even leading and mentoring. So we release them to mentor others as well. So, so this, you know, seven point process uh, is a good, you know, it's a good process. It's a good progression uh, to follow. If, if we are um, mentoring someone, if we are training someone, uh, in order to, uh, in, in order to, you know, uh, we're delegating some role, but this is a, this is a good way of doing it. So we, you know, we can keep that in mind. Okay, um, you know, we learned very quickly that any ministry has an administrative side of it. Okay, administrative side meaning there are systems, processes, there are you know, maybe some bills. Maybe some planning, some budgeting, some uh, you know team meetings, people training. You know, all these things are part of uh, ministry. Right? There's no escaping it. So because when we think of ministry, we most of the times we think of the spiritual side of ministry, right? Preaching, teaching, praying, leading in worship, etc. And uh, we are most people are comfortable with that aspect. Right. Um, but then the administrative side of it is uh, equally important because we know that the admin side can influence the spiritual side. Right? Actually, both are spiritual. You know, if you consider it, there's no 
but for the sake of this understanding uh, we're just kind of dividing it you know into spiritual and administrative side right um to the so both are important like if you look at the tabernacle which david built you know if you go through it you'll see that there is there are a lot of systems there in place right? in terms of how the people who are experienced the people who are older how they train the others right? so that i'm sure there's a process there then talks about how they would be coming in for the duty of leading in the tabernacle because this was non stop 24 7 24 hours 7 days a week non stop worship so the people who were part of it you know how would they come and do it was it a random thing no it was it was planned it was planned for that for every two hours or so um, there would be these number of people coming and ministering and then the others would come in right so we see that also being mentioned so so there's a lot of planning and processes which are in which were in place in the in the tabernacle in the temple right we see that the, the same thing was followed right so so we know that um, you know in worship ministry the worship pastor is also uh, has to play the role of an administrator right um, resources when we say resources this time there's uh, ability of people so people which means people are resources there is uh, also the the money part of it the finances so all this you know hr human resource there's time which is a resource there's money which is a resource there's ability and all that so one needs to be able to plan for the utilization of it right plan and steward it well okay oversee it well so if one has a good um you know good grip on this then things will flow well okay now it it may not come it may not come easy it may not come naturally for certain people so so one can um you know one can always have people who can step in and help right uh, one can learn these things right it's not something that cannot be learned even if one doesn't have a natural inclination or ability one can learn the worship pastor can learn or in addition to learning um the worship pastor can also direct uh, or have someone uh, do these administrative things right but the worship pastor has to learn right? uh, uh, some amount of administration definitely has to come from the uh, worship pastor right so so certain things that can help us is uh, to have a scheduling you know system a scheduling tool because uh, when we say schedule we are talking about uh, rosters right we are talking about um, rosters that go out for the team right let me um, kind of show a roster that um, that is done here uh, I, I'm not sure if anybody's seen it let me um, show that okay rosters rosters sorry mm. yeah okay Um, so uh, you know, I, I, I've seen that those who are in the Bible College, those who are you know, um, you have your roster. Uh, I've seen it multiple things that the rosters are, but uh, typically for worship ministry also, uh, you know, this is uh, a roster that goes out. Uh, people give their availability, and then uh, you know, it goes out. Let me just share that. Um, Okay, so so this is a roster which uh, goes out every month. This is uh, September roster. Okay, so okay, I'm just trying to make it bigger. Oops. Okay, right. So you see, um, you know, these are the different worship leaders. Right? They're going to be leading in all five locations, and these are. These are their names, right? Uh, as against, uh, so September has five Sundays, so we have that. We need to be planned. So this was um, these dates 
were um, given for the entire team. And then uh, the team gave in their dates, available dates, and then they roster, right? So, OK. So in each location, so that's the worship leaders across location. So into each location, um, you know that as a team, there are different musicians, different people doing different things, right? So you have the worship leader. You have people playing keyboards, you're playing acoustic guitar, there's electric guitar, there's someone who's playing bass, uh, someone on drums, and someone who's singing backing vocals. So, so that is also filled in, right? So sometimes. Some things are not filled in, but then, you know, uh, like for example, South, um, the team is like this. So we have, you know, a, like coming Sunday, we don't have keyboard, we don't have uh, electric guitar, we have bass, we have this happening, right? For the following Sunday, we have keyboard and guitar, but no bass. So, you know, it happens each location. Uh, based on the availability, etc. But the thing is, everybody gets a clarity, and uh, the responsibility is of that of the worship pastor or who was leading the worship ministry to to do this, to initiate this, right? So uh, and to have this schedule. Otherwise, if you if you're looking at you know multiple locations, um, then it becomes a problem, right? Okay, so we have this. And I think uh, for one of the services, the Bible College students are leading, right? So that is not mentioned here for the 10.30 AM service at uh, North. OK, so we have this. Right? This, this is what uh, goes out. This kind of a planning is done. So yeah. OK. Okay, so um, so something to schedule. So you can have, you know, this is a simple Excel sheet. Um, there are ministries which have, uh, you know, um, an online uh, tool which is which has a subscription model, meaning that um, this is a paid thing which sometimes churches use. Something called planning center, right? Um, which is quite advanced. Uh, and it's nice, comfortable. Um, it um, it's something that where people send in their, you know, send in their response saying I'm available. They can just fill in themselves, um, and it you know it forms the roster, and also the worship leaders can actually upload the um, the song list, like the songs for that particular um, Sunday, along with the YouTube link, along with the key and all that. Then it automatically sends it out to the to the team right so it, it has a it has a function of uh, where you can upload the the contact information of the team so whoever was you know scheduled for that particular sunday uh, you know let's say bible college students let's say um, you know francis blessy um, all these people are there like oh, who else um, uh, caleb Right, Nelson, uh, Nelson. All these people are there rostered. So what it does is, it's uh, once the whoever is leading worship, let's say Francis, uploads the set list, the YouTube link, the of the song and the key. Then you schedule a day on which uh, maybe maybe the practice date is already set. So before the practice date, you schedule uh, this message to be sent out. So it sends out the song list, sends them a reminder. You know, uh, so it's called planning center, and it can a lot of churches use it in the West. Some of some of the some of these big ones, and but it's a paid model. Like you have to pay, and the responsibility is on the team. So suppose a team member doesn't fill in, um, you know, then it doesn't work well. They have to respond to it. So that's up, you know. Uh, so things like a set planning tool, a community building tool, uh, a core team. So all these things. Um, that a worship leader can, uh, worship worship pastor needs to be aware of and use it, right? Uh, a community, like this planning center takes care of all these things, but, you know, if there is nothing there in place, then we'll have to do a manual work of it, but be aware that, yes, this needs to be done, this needs to be carried out, right? Um, and a core team always helps because you have some of these mature 
people, that's your leaders, uh, who can help in the planning, praying, planning, uh, implementation of whatever. You know, maybe you want to have a training program for the worship team. Maybe you want to have a worship team retreat. Uh, maybe there is uh, some new area that the the team you know needs to step into. Maybe prophetic worship and and so on. So having a core team always helps. So it doesn't have to be the worship pastor himself. You know, carrying the whole load. They can have trusted people um, uh, as uh, as a core team right? to to be able to uh, of leaders, core team of leaders who can carry the load and but appointing the core team one has to be careful like you you appoint the wrong people then uh, you need to deal with those problems and uh, and it it becomes a it becomes an issue right um and the core team maybe is in you know isn't in sync isn't walk, walking in step with the worship pastor then it becomes a uh, issue like so it's it we need to be careful okay um okay any any doubts here any anything that you want to add? Any thoughts that you have? Um, anything at all? Right. No doubts. Okay, so I um, I was just reminded of uh, one particular church that uh, I know I went to as part of the mission trip, right? So it was in Chhattisgarh, and then we had um, um, we had a, um, like a, a retreat, right? So then, um, since I was the only person there, then I thought, okay, let's get the help of the worship team over there, and then you know get things uh, work with them, right? So. Uh, I said, okay, can we? I just gave four or five songs and said, can we practice? And then uh, one thing is, everybody came at their own time. Okay, so we didn't. So just waiting, and then people came, staggered in. Uh, suppose it was uh, like seven thirty, then people came at seven, people came at seven fifteen, and then uh, people came at um, okay, thanks uh, at seven thirty, and and then um, um, and then so I then asked them, are you prepared? Okay, uh, so we are going to have a practice rehearsal. So are you prepared? So then they were figuring out, oh, what songs? You know, what are the songs? What what are we going to, uh, you know, plan and what what are we going to sing and etc. So there's a. I said I had already sent it, uh, sent it to you. I said, ah, oh, we're not sure. Okay, so I had some printouts. So I had kind of anticipated this. I wasn't sure. So I had some printouts of the songs and chords and uh, you know uh, and so i said no we're going to we're going to follow this so gave it out and uh, and then and then everybody was playing their own thing right i said you know we need to follow the you know, the chords because there's a keyboardist there's an electric guitar there's a bass guitar and uh, you know there's an acoustic guitar so um, you know all all the drummer and all need to go together so um Please follow the chords. And everybody's like, no, it's it's okay. We'll uh, we'll do it. We'll just wing it. So I said, no, no, no. We're not doing that. We need to follow. You know, we need to follow the chords. You know, get comfortable with the chords. Playing the right chords at the right time, at the right place in the song. And the, so so that was something that we did. And and finally, we kind of pulled it off. Right. We we practiced. It took a while. Uh, not everybody was happy with all these uh, things because they were used to doing their own thing, playing their own thing. So finally, at the end of the retreat, and just got some feedback. This is the first time we've practiced like this. You know, this is the first time we've ever done this, uh, and it was good. We sounded nice. It was nice. I think we need to do it like this. You know, going forward, I said, "Wow, it was great." So, so not every you know every ministry or every every uh, you know worship team has this understanding, right? They're trying to figure things on their own and trying to come to be uh, you know come to an effective place, uh, but. Um, yeah, so this this always helps, you know, having the structure, having uh, having these kind of things in place, processes in place, uh, really helps. Okay, so um, when we look at the team, okay, when we look at the worship team that is ministering, the worship team typically has. We're looking at uh, again uh, urban context, uh, but it can again be applicable in a in a in a rural setting as well. Right, so more and more churches are kind of 
uh, developing in this area and learning and developing and so on. So we see this um, happening. They might be using you know uh, different instruments. They might be use, the the style of music would might be different, but still we see that. They are developing in these things, learning and developing because, you know, or they're seeing things on YouTube and their, you know, their information is there, so they're learning, developing this, right? So when you look at the worship team, you know, we have the the ones who lead worship, right? Uh, people who are maybe gifted, they feel there's a calling, they've grown, right? Um, uh, and they are expressive in their worship, and they they're also, you know. They have this thing to, you know, I, I I want to host this. I want to invite others to join in in the worship that I'm I'm lifting up. So, so the team is there. Uh, so, um, so it includes worship leaders, right? and you know, typically in a big church, there could be multiple worship leaders like we have, uh, you know, and then there are singers. Now these are also worshippers, right? But they sing and uh, they're singing backing vocals. Um, so from these, we can actually have worship leaders uh, rising up, right? From this pool of singers, there are others who, who kind of, um, you know, take those small steps, and they can be groomed and nurtured to to lead in worship. Right? Then we have the band, band meaning musicians, right? Play different instruments. Then we have the sound team, which takes care of the audio of the uh, the whole uh, ministry audio requirements, um, and that's a very important role as well. And we have a media projection team, which takes care of the lyrics being projected, uh, which is, again, uh, or maybe lyrics and videos and whatever, you know, scripture, all that, uh, the projects, that's become a norm now, right? Um, earlier, we used to have books, song books, song sheets, which people held and, and sang or held and, you know, prayed and... Uh, but even in the uh, like uh, you know the, the other churches or uh, the uh, let's say some of the orthodox conservative churches, um, even there, right? We see there is a you know there is a screen and there are see, these scriptures which are being projected and people realize that hey it's, it's much bigger you know even for the senior folks it's much bigger the font size is bigger and it's more convenient um, not to hold anything but to look at it and you know so the so the media presentation or projection team um, also um, that role has become very important then we have you know some of the churches have the flag and the choreography and the dance and you know that team so uh, not every church has it um, but churches do have right so um, so these these are some of the people who are part of the bigger team right uh, can we consider them as uh, you know worship ministry? Yes, they are. Some are administrative roles, but then they are also part of the team that that minister together. Right? Um, so we need to uh, consider that. Right. But if you took look at a uh, you know typical worship team, which considers of worship leaders and musicians, right, and singers, what are some qualifications? Right. What are some qualifications that they need to have? Um, scripture is very clear. There, there needs to be commitment, faithfulness, and character. Right? Faithfulness, commitment, all that is part of character. So which means if we can group it, we can say character and ability. Right? Character and skill. Testimony and ability. Right? So both go together. And character takes priority. Right? We cannot overlook character or put it aside and say, hey, this person has a skill. This person has great ability. So, you know, let's let's you know overlook this character bit. Right. Um, so so that's that's not the right thing. Right. So um, one needs to be a believer. Because this is worship ministry. I know that some people have this opinion that it's okay. That person ultimately will become a believer. You know, once that person is moving, uh, interacting with the church, and you know all that, and with the, with the team, other believers, and then on become uh, the thing. So as long as they have the skill, let them come and play. Some people have that opinion, but 
but we know that worship ministry is uh, is a group of people who are worshiping the lord in spirit and in truth right and who are inviting others to do the same so unless i worship the lord in spirit and in truth how can i invite another person to do that right so this should be priority that the worship a team a member is a believer a firm believer in christ committed and also is committed to the to the local church you know, whichever church they are part of and to the team right so which means they are committed to that local church body you know sometimes people say okay i i'm getting an opportunity to play here so i'll go there and then tomorrow or you know i'm i'm getting an opportunity to play over there so let me go there i'm getting an opportunity over there oh it's a bigger stage it's a bigger you know congregation it's a bigger sphere of influence so let me go there right and all this is with the premise that god has called, called me into this kind of ministry so i i'm going to do it you know now not against itinerant ministry you know some people have that maybe even as worship leaders or you know worship musicians and singers they have an you know they have a calling to go to different places that's fine absolutely okay but we when you look at ministering in the local church are are they part of a local church right are they um, you know committed to a local church are they committed to the lo that local church so if if they're going to be part of the ministry of that local church we are saying that you need to be you know committed there committed to that body and also committed to the ministry so that comes first the commitment comes first so we then we can always ask the person you know are you committed to this church Right? Is this your home church? On a Sunday morning, as a believer, where do you want to worship? Is it here? Is it where do you go? Is this your home church? So that needs to be there. That needs that needs to be established. You know, first and foremost. Okay. So um, that is the thing. So attitude, cooperation, enthusiasm, teachability, uh, being able to receive instruction, and also to commit. You know, to commit and to uh, and also to contribute, right? contribute in terms of ideas, contribute in terms of, you know, uh, responsibility, taking the, sharing the load, etc. We also say, you know, I must be f uh, flexible musically. You know, why do we say that? Because, you know, some, what happens is, uh, I mean, this, this has happened to me, right? So we look at certain styles of music. Maybe it's, you know, folk, folk kind of a music. Maybe it's, um, you know, uh, like a Carnatic or a village folk kind of music. And then sometimes we think that, hey, that is a lower standard. We look down on it. Right? And we think, okay, this music is, is of a higher standard, you know, because of its complexity and all that. And maybe it's popular. So this is of a higher standard. So, so we'll compare and look down on the other styles of music and kind of, you know, reject it. Uh, saying I'm not going to be doing that, etc. But that's wrong, right? And as a as a believer, you know, all kinds of music. So one needs to be flexible. To maybe a song is there in a different genre of music. You need to be flexible and say, okay, you know, this is something that we can do, and uh, let's sing it, let's do it. It's a nice, it's a good song. It's uh, something that you know has good words, and uh, and let's let's do it. Right, so uh, one needs to be flexible that way, musically, and not be rigid and say, "I I won't do it." Right? Okay. Um, okay. So we are we are looking at some of the organizational aspects of worship ministry, and uh, the the kind of uh, role that the worship pastor plays in establishing these kind of systems and administrative processes and so on. Right. Um, so rehearsal. Let's uh, look at uh, this whole thing of rehearsing. Okay, um, so like I said, the more people you add to the uh, to the team, right? If there's just one person, you can go where you want. You can start when you want. You can stop when you want. Um, you can play different, you know, different uh, played in different key scales. You can do all that. 
you don't need to consult with another person. But the moment you have one more person with you on the team, right, you need to plan. You need to practice, right? And um, so the thing is, the different words that we use, one is practice, the other one is rehearsal. Okay. So as a worship ministry, you know, we always say that practice is personal. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that you as a singer, you as a musician, you as a worship leader, you need to practice on your own individually. Okay. Your skill, your craft, that particular, that list of five or six songs that you're going to do, you as an individual with that role that you are you know, ministering in, in the team, you need to practice on your own. Okay, learn the song, learn the chords, learn how it's played, uh, learn it, learn it well. Right? So that's a personal preparation. Right? And as a worship leader, okay, how do we start the song? You know, and as a team, how do we start the song? How do we end the song? How do we move from this song to the other song? Is there a plan? Okay. And uh, why are we doing this song? You know, and uh, normally, as a worship leader, you carry an extra weight is a responsibility because you're leading the congregation. So what is the Lord saying? Right? What emphasis is God putting in your heart for that particular song or for, for that particular service even? Right? So all that is the personal time, personal preparation. Right? So practice is personal. Okay. Then when we look at the other word, which is rehearsal, now, rehearsal, we say, is relational, okay, which means we are coming together after having practiced individually, personally. Right? So practice is personal. Rehearsal is relational, which means as a team, now we are going to rehearse together what we have already practiced on our own. So that's very important. right? So you know, these are some of the things that we learn through trial and error. So as a team, when we come together, we are not coming there to learn a something, learn a song, learn how to play. No, we've already done it. And we're coming together, you know, as a as a team in order to go through it. So what, what does a team do when, when they rehearse, right? So when you rehearse, you're saying, okay, um, they are fine tuning the song. Okay, here is where you're understanding, okay, here is where I need to sing softly, here is where I need to sing loud, here is where I should not sing, right? Um, as a backing vocalist, I should not, I need not sing, here is where this person can probably lead in the verse, you know, all these things you're putting together, right? You're implementing when you rehearse together. Um, so how do we start the song? Okay, according to the, according to the, you know, the, the, the recording that we heard, well, the whole band starts together, but can we do something differently? Right? Can we just have the voices alone? Right? All the singers, their voices alone, starting softly, without any music, the beginning, and then slowly, one by one, the instruments can come in. Maybe the keyboard can come in. Maybe the bass guitar can come in. And maybe the drums can come in at the end. So, you know, so these kind of arrangements of how do we want to express that song or express what is there in the song? How can we expect, express it powerfully, meaningfully? And what will really help? You know, it doesn't have to be a very theatrical performance kind of a thing. Right? We're not aiming there. We're not going there. But how best can we convey this? This, uh, you know, what the word, what the song is conveying? How best can we convey this, this aspect of praise, this aspect of worship? How best can we uh, express it? Right. So there are many ways you can be creative and you can do it. So that's the thing. So during a rehearsal time. Uh, so that's the difference between practice and rehearsal. During a rehearsal time, all this can be uh, implemented. Right. So you already know the song, but then. You have the freedom to implement all this, right? Okay, so so that's why we say practice is personal and rehearsal is relational. So uh, at a rehearsal, rehe I'm sorry, at a rehearsal, the team spends time and 
God's presence, worshiping in unity. The rehearsal itself can be a time of worship. Um, they, they, you know, maybe before or after, you could have a time of a teaching, a Bible study, you know, and then there could be a discussion. There could be uh, a time of prayer, you know, maybe at the start or maybe at the end, and you know, all this, you know, can happen and can be planned. Excuse me. Can be planned for a rehearsal in a rehearsal, right? Um, especially if you have your own space for rehearsal, all this can happen, and you can plan it in. Okay. Any questions here? Any questions? Any doubts? Okay. So I guess we we would need to stop here. So and then next class we'll look at the role of the band, the musicians. You know, um, um, that role is also important, and it's not a secondary role; it's a primary role as well. So we'll look at that right in our next class. Okay. Um, so um, the, uh, uh, when we meet next next week, so today we won't have our second session, right? Right. Thank you. God bless.